How's it going guys? Uh, it's James here. I uh, had a lot of people asking for a deck list uh, for the Gabubon deck that I did play um, in the Ultimate Cup yesterday. And I did get 14th place with it. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and give you the uh, deck profile here on uh, my friend's channel. Uh, check out uh, Valley Boy TCG. Uh, he hasn't been posting recently because he's, you know, he has family things, so he's a busy guy. Uh, so it's cool that he's getting this video out today uh, as I'm doing this video. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with the deck profile here. Uh, we did play five eggs. Um, we start off with four Wanyamons. Uh, Wanyamon is really good in this deck. Um, as long as you have a blue tamer, you get the draw off. You know, it's your draw power. Uh, so we do have the, the four Wanyamons. And then our fifth egg, uh, because we do run Ukomons, uh, so we have to run five eggs. Uh, we run the uh, Bukamon uh, with the jamming. Uh, there's some stuff that comes up with this that's actually really good. Uh, keeping your uh, bodies alive uh, that we can talk about a little later. I'll give you more in depth about that. Um, but these are the eggs I'm running. And then next we'll go into the rookies. I'm running 14 rookies. Um, this is a Gabubon deck. So we'll go ahead and start off with the most obvious uh, Gabubon, Gabumon that we have here. And it's a BT6 Gabumon. We run four of this guy. Um, plays come up uh, if you have him on board. He does have the, um, if a mat is played all turns, uh, gain a memory. So if you have this guy out and your opponent happens to hit into a mat in security, uh, you will get the memory for it. Um, I usually don't have him by himself on the board unless I'm going into a bonds or I need to like digivolve over it to get some more draw power. Um, but that's, uh, he's mostly just to go into bond. You know, he, he gets the restand with his own inheritable. So it's really good. Uh, so we run four of that guy. And then next we have the next set of Gabumons, the EX1 Gabumon. Uh, we run three of this guy. Um, we run him for his inheritable. He has a really good inheritable. Uh, that you can combo off with the uh, Lanamon hybrid, uh, tucking him under her to get the effect. Um, so, you know, he's your searcher, he can add a tamer or a Gabumon, so you can add Gabu Bond off of him as well. Uh, you can also add, uh, like I said, we're playing Ukomon, so along with Ukomons, uh, you have Louis. So you can add Louis as well because it, he says that you can add a tamer or a Digimon, and the tamer part is not um, color based. So you can add the white tamer as well. So he's actually really, really good. Um, there's a lot of times in tournament where I would actually add a Louie off of him and then I could Louie and then promote, gain a lot of memory with the other tamers and you know just go for game there. So he, he's actually really, really good. Uh, so we're running him at three. Uh, next we have the uh, new BT15 Gabumon. Uh, this guy is really, really good as well. Um, if you promote him while you have the um, Gabu Bond um, Matt, uh, you'll gain the memory from Matt, draw one, and then he'll let you draw another one because you have a Matt in play. Uh, so he's really good and he gives blocker as well. Uh, he can give it to any blue Digimon, I believe it is. Oh no, he gives it to any Digimon. Man, that's actually crazy. You know what? Now that I think about it, yeah, I did use that in tournament. I gave uh, Death X a blocker one time. Uh, it ended up dying anyways, but uh, yeah, he can give any Digimon uh, on board at the start of main blocker, which is really good actually. And then his inheritable is also to uh, when attacking, draw one. So that's really good as well. You can use his effect with Lan or you can use Lanamon's effect also with him, uh, so that you can draw with uh, you know you Digivolve over Tamer with Lanamon or another Digimon. You know sometimes I would come in and Digivolve Lanamon over this one. And then tuck another one so that I can get the draw two from the Wanyamon and this Gabumon, and then search off the Gabumon. This deck is very, very consistent. Uh, I, there's not really a time where I didn't have a hand of like 10 to 12 cards because of how much draw power there is. Uh, so it, it's pretty crazy uh, what you can do. But yeah, we run three of this guy. He's really good. And then our last rookie, uh, we run four Ukomons. So Ukumon, uh, you know, he lets you, he, he makes this deck a lot faster and lets you keep up um, with stuff in the meta or 
be faster than everything else uh, that you know has to build a stack or you know has to take time to to build their board with tamers and stuff ukoman speeds that up and uh lets you gain the memory you can gain a ton of memory in this deck it's pretty crazy if you have like the louis and the mats on board you're gaining like six after your opponent's putting you at like one or two so a lot of the times you can get to like eight memory nine memory seven memory consistently uh, and ukamon helps with that um, because of his gaining memory when promoting and hatching and letting you digivolve to draw another one uh, you know if you're missing a piece for anything he's really really good for that so uh, we definitely have to run him at four to speed up that process. Uh, if you do have Ukamon over Bukamon, that's just, you know, you're, I did that a lot and, you know, it's just annoying for the opponent because then they have to deal with it. They have to swing over it. If not, it's just going to keep attacking and surviving because um, if they don't get rid of it, you know, it has jamming. It's never dying. Uh, so that was our rookie lineup. Uh, we are running 14 rookies. Next. We will go into the level fours. And for the level fours, we have eight, um, eight level fours. Uh, first, we'll start off with, you know, we'll start off with Lanamon because we have been talking about her already. Uh, Lanamon is really, really, really good. Um, even if you're not going over Tamer with her, you can still get her, her effect to tuck a blue Digimon under her or another Digimon. It doesn't have to be just her, uh, which is even crazier. There was actually um, a time when I had went into a Gabumon on board, but I didn't have this Gabumon, this BT6 Gabumon, but I had it in hand. But since she says you can place a uh, blue level three from your hand to the bottom of one of your uh, blue Digimon, uh, you can actually slot him under. So like, let's say I warp into over this guy and uh, I don't have this one, but I draw him later on off Digivolves, or I have him and before I Digivolve into him. Uh, you can go into Lanamon over another body or Tamer. Use her effect to tuck him under Gabubon that you were missing the this guy with. And then your Gabubon has his three swings that he's getting. Um, it's really, really good, and it's uh, it's if you're missing the piece at the time and you draw it later, that's when it's really good. So Lanamon is just really crazy in this deck. She also gains the jamming as well. Um, so like, let's say you go, you give her jamming and then you want to get rid of a blocker on board or something, you can go into Zudomon over her. Um, so that's really cool as well. So she's very good in this deck. I really liked her at three. I, I don't know if I would run her at four because there's not a lot of space for other stuff that I want to run. I thought about running her at four and then the other hybrid that I'm running at two. Uh, but I just felt like running her at three was fine. I saw her enough. I had plenty of draws and searches uh, for her. Uh, so I think running her at three was really good. So Lanamon at three. Uh, the next hybrid we are running is the Kumamon hybrid. Uh, when Digivolving trashed the bottom source, he did come up a lot as well, uh, comboing with Zudomon. Uh, so this can really come up. Uh, not only can it come up with Zudomon's effect, but it can also come up with our other level four, and we'll talk about him in a second. Um, but this Kumamon comboed with Zudomon and also Sora and Joe, because we are running Sora and Joe as well, uh, gives access to be able to bounce high level Digimon or you know, answer other decks that do a lot of tucking and stuff. Uh, like I, I know like black decks probably do it and Gammon and stuff like that um, So he's I, th I think he's pretty good at three. Uh, I was trying him at two and then Lanamon at four, but I, I Felt like I needed to see him more There was like just times that I wanted him more than I wanted her and sometimes I wanted her more than I wanted him So it just depend on it. It was depending on the board state at the time uh, But so I decided to run him at three so I think he was a, you know, that was a good option for me, and I don't regret it. <laughs> I don't regret it at all. Uh, our last level fours here. Um, this guy is actually really crazy. Uh, Gesselman. Uh, what he does, he trashes any source when attacking, and then it bounces a level five or lower uh, back to the opponent's hand. 
So this guy mixed with Sora and Joe can bounce at level five just straight out. Um, I ran him at two because also in this meta, there's a lot of Digimon that um, are coming out without sources in general, or opponents will hard play level fives and then you'll have to answer it. He's really, really good at answering that. So like if I have like a Gabumon in Raising and I promote, I'm gonna have the memory because a lot of the times I'll have either Louie or Matt or uh, Sora Joe to get the memory to be able to Digivolve into him. So then I'll go into him and then my opponent's like, what's that? Like, cause a lot of people don't know what this card does. Let's be honest. Not a lot of people play fish. <laughs> so, uh, and then once you read the effect to them, they're like, oh, it's any source. And it's like, yeah, you can trash any source. Um, and then down to level five. So another thing that I would do is like, let's say my opponent has a blocker with something because of inheritable. I would swing with him, use his effect to strip the blocker from that, and then bounce like another Digimon, because you don't have to bounce the same Digimon that you strip from. Um, so, Gessomon was a really, really good tech that came up a lot, especially against Numamon, because uh, I did play against a Numamon player, and uh, yeah, he's just really good. Along with Zudomon, he comes in clutch, and then if you have Bukumon under, like, this guy is just living. Like, you have Bukumon under with Sorjo and, you know, just him. Like, there's not much that your opponent can do unless, you know, they hard cast something to get rid of him or they have, like, a wider board. Uh, but a lot of times they won't, and, you know, he can just go off. Or maybe I'll only need him, like, once, and he'll do what he needs to do, and that brings me back in the game. So, Gesselmon is really, really, really good. I really liked him, and he definitely was, you know, MVP of the entire tournament. Like, he put in work. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and talk about level fives. I'm only running four, and that's the obvious Zudomon here. Uh, Zudomon is pretty crazy. Um, definitely, will, probably one of the best aces in the game. Not probably, he is, if not the best. I would say Mega Gargo, then him. Uh, he can bounce anything on play and trash any sources. Well, he trashes the sources, and then anything with no sources, uh, he can bounce. So he could potentially bounce a level seven, you know, all the way up to level seven if you strip enough sources. And with Sora Joe and Gesso and Kumamon, like we definitely trash enough sources. Um, so he definitely won me a lot of games. There was a lot of times where it's like, okay, they hard play something, or you know, I swing with something else, uh, use Sora Joe, trash sources, and then I'll hard hit play him for four, um, and he just bounces whatever they have. Or if I have enough memory, like I said, a lot of the times I'll be at seven or eight. You know, six, seven, eight is the sweet spot of where I'll be. You know, I'll just hard play him and, you know, bounce whatever they have. New against Numamon, that's what we do. A lot of turn ones, uh, they'll just hard play a Gurimon and we don't want them to have anything on board uh, because next turn they'll more than likely go into Monzemon or something along the lines of that. Uh, so Zunomon was, you know, another MVP in the deck. You know, Running him at four is crazy. Uh, he also gives you know the potential of let's say you want to go hybrid or you have Gessamon, your opponent attacks into Gessamon or something, and then you Zudomon into it for free. That's really good as well. Um, the follow ups with Zudomon that I would do as well to protect him uh, if I had it, I would go into the um, BT15 Metal Gurumon because we are running that card as well, um, which we'll see right now after this guy. Uh, but we, we would go into Metal Garumon over him, and he would just have the evade protection along with stunning my opponent's board. Uh, even if they had tamers, uh, I did play against two setcom players, and that did actually come in clutch, uh, the Metal Garumon, uh, because what I did was they gave me a ton of memory right, and I'm already gaining. So a lot of times in those setcom matches, I was at 10. So uh, I would have Zudomon on board, or I would hard play Zudo or promote and Digivolve into it, whatever. Um, and then I would go into Metal Gurumon and I would target their purple Kari's and their yellow Kari or if they had something on board, um, you know, he just, Metal Guru would just stun them and, and do work. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to the uh, level sixes and we'll talk about him. Uh, we are running two Metal Gurus. Uh, like I said, um, you know, he, he was really good as well. Uh, I did also play against Fenrir Lugamon where he came in clutch as well. Uh, because they couldn't uh, Hell Luga him they because uh, uh, of the evade. So they could Hell Luga and he would evade and then restand. So he essentially has two protections. 
um, when being destroyed. So that's also really, really good in that matchup uh, for Luga and any uh, kind of decks that you know just pop Digimon by effects. I don't believe there's a lot right now running around, uh, just like Red Hybrid and Luga, I would say. Uh, so they also couldn't get um, the uh, Luga player I played. He couldn't get off the Finrare Luga effect to restand um, because I had this on board and I had Zudo under it. And he tried to pop it, you know, okay, evade, restand, and then he doesn't get his restand because um, it requires him to delete a Digimon. So that was also really good as well. Uh, so Metal Gururumon for sure. Uh, there's some cool things you can do with this guy as well. If your opponent has a board, you can warp over a Gabumon. Uh, if they have like a level 6 or anything that has 10k or more, uh, you can warp into this guy for 4 over Gabumon, which is also really good. Um, something that I would do, I would warp into him, and then I would swing, restand, and then I would go into Gabumon over him. And then if I have the right Gabumon under, or if I needed the right Gabumon, I would go into Lanamon and tuck... Um, you know one of the BT6 Gabumons under him so that Gabubond is now getting his uh, extra restand so that's essentially four swings that we can get off with that uh, once with himself and then you go into Gabubond over him Gabubond's effect he can swing restand himself if I have a blue tamer swing one more time restand again with the inheritable of uh, BT6 Gabumon and then swing again so that's four checks that you can essentially get out of nowhere uh, which like I said a lot of the times we'll have the memory for it if we don't we can always use blue memory boost because we are running boost as well and that's really good uh, so Metal Gurumon definitely did uh, coming you know there's a lot of stuff that came in clutch today where certain cards at the right time came or I had them already because of all the draw power in searches uh, so Metal Gurumon at 2 was super good uh, next, this wouldn't be a Bond deck without uh, Gabu Bond, and we are running three of him. Uh, I tried four, and it was way too much. I was seeing it way too much, so we cut it down to three. Uh, Gabu Bond is just an insane card in this meta. Uh, a lot of people leave level fives on board, uh, so they can either blast into it, or they can Digivolve over it next turn. Uh, or there's um, wide boards that people will create. Um, Leviamon X, uh, whenever they, they wanna get that effect off with like um, their level fives on board, right? Whenever you play Digimon by effect, he can bottom deck the level five before they even get there. Uh, so that's really good. His bottom decking effect is crazy. So, and it's not once per turn. So that's, really really good it's really helped in the Numamon matchup as well uh, bottom decking the uh, uh, Monze X or the Monzes that they would just hard play on board uh, we could just go into this guy because he can warp over any Gabumon it doesn't particularly have to be the BT6 Gabumon uh, so it's really good um, bottom decking three Digimon especially against Numamon where they want everything deleted uh, he really really comes in clutch so I think this deck in general just does really well in the meta uh, because everything wants to be deleted. You have D Brigade that wants to be deleted, uh, Numamon wants to be deleted, you know, uh, Leviathan X that not necessarily want to be deleted, but they stay on board with level 5. Uh, so he's just a crazy card, and he lets you swing three times, possibly four with Metal Gurumon. It's just crazy aggro. So he's really, really good. and. He is one of the boss monsters. Uh, next we have... I was really debating on this part right here uh, before the tournament. Uh, two death axes. Um, I wanted to cut one and just run one death X, but I ended up running two because I didn't know what to replace it with. Uh, death X did come in handy a couple times. Sometimes um, I would be at five and I would just be like, okay, death X for you know, 9 or 11, whatever it is, and then my opponent would have to answer it. Uh, there was a weird interaction that I had. Uh, my opponent, um, he dropped the Magnumon, recovered, and then Digivolved into Shadow Seraphi over it, and he had like 16 security or something like that because he kept having to play his Magnas. I was just bouncing them. He didn't have anything else. Uh, he just kept recovering. Uh, so at end of turn, like, Death X popped him, and then Shadow Seraphite gave him like minus whatever. 
because I think it gives you minus one or minus four, something crazy, depending on how many security you have. And he was able to pop it like that. Uh, but that was that, that death X at that time was enough to set him back. Uh, because we were getting rid of his uh, Shadow Seraphe, he didn't have another body on board. Uh, so, Death X, I mean, if you can find something to replace it, it was, it was. I didn't know what to replace it with. Uh, I just wanted to replace one and just keep the other. But, I mean, running two, I did see it more than enough, sometimes too much, to be honest. Uh, so, if you want to cut something from the deck, it would definitely be like one of these guys. Uh, but I mean Death X is Death X, right? Uh, does really well into the meta right now with all the Numamons and hybrids and all that stuff uh, Next we'll go ahead and talk about the tamers uh, We'll start off with the obvious tamer. It is a Gobble Bond deck. We run the Matt here uh, when promoting a Gabumon or Grumon in text or in name, I guess uh, gain one and draw one this guy's just crazy. Uh, that effect doesn't require you to suspend him. Uh, so a lot of this time, a lot of the times, you can go into hybrid over him after you get his effect, and then you know do hybrid things or whatever. But this guy's just crazy, especially when he is matched with uh, Louis. Him plus Louis on board uh, while promoting a Gabumon is just crazy memory, and that's where a lot of the memory game comes from is him and Louis. Uh, I mean, there's not much to say about the card. It's just a really good card in this deck. Like, yeah, I honestly don't know what else to say about it. It's just Matt. <laughs> Next, uh, we're running uh, two Davis. Uh, Davis did come up sometimes. Uh, I mean, he is a memory tamer. We didn't need the memory uh, tamer a lot of the times. I mean, if they did have it, then that that's pretty much like game. Uh, but a lot of times I would digivolve over it as well so that I didn't have to digivolve over my mats. Uh, so that I can get their effects later on, but Davis is a good searcher um, It's just I'm only running two because we are running white cards uh, with the Louis and um, Ukomans along with the death X's uh, So it can whiff uh, because I'm also running a couple options as well So we run two Davis. He's a memory tamer. So uh, and Then next we have uh, Sword Joe Sorjo did really, really good. Uh, again, I'm going to go back to it, again, especially against Numamon, where my opponent likes to have bodies on board with no sources. Uh, Sorjo just gives me free memory. I don't know if people just forget what Sorjo does because nobody plays it anymore. Um, but yeah, stripping the two sources and then playing a Zudomon is like really good. Or like going into Kumamon, swinging Kumamon, then Sorjoing, and then playing uh, Zudomon is like crazy uh, so we do run the two sword Joe uh, it did come up surprisingly a lot I thought people would play around it and honestly they just didn't care they're like here here's your memory um, so yeah sword Joe did uh, do work and then the last tamer I know uh, people will probably be like why so many um, but we were running for Louie for Louis in this deck is cracked. Um, being able to turbo your turns, especially if you have Ukomon. Uh, Ukomon promotes, uh, you know, turn one, put my opponent at one, or if I'm at three, you know, we're only, depending on how many uh, Louis we have on board, I'm gaining more memory, right? But like, let's say I have a Gabumon on back, and then uh, we use Louie, we promote the Gabumon, we're gaining memory off the Louie and the mats, and drawing off of all the mats that we have. Uh, there was actually quite a few games where I had like two, three, sometimes four mats. So I'm getting that four memory off just the mats, and then off the Louie as well, that's five memory. So we're gaining essentially two memory, uh, because Louie would be free. Um, once you have mats and all your Louis on board, it's just crazy. It gets crazy. Uh, I go to 9, 10, uh, pretty much the rest of the game, and my opponent's just kind of sitting there <laughs> watching me do my things turn, you know, rushing them down. So Louis just a, a really good tamer, especially in this deck, because uh, Gabumon plus Matt. Uh, so we're running four of those. Next, we have our options. Um, I was running two blue memory boosts. Gaining the two later on so we could hybrid for game uh, came up quite a bit. Uh, this was actually in my security a lot of the times for whatever reason. 
uh, that was cool. My opponent was either hitting Louis, Tamers, and, and like Blue Memory Boost. Um, I did play it when I needed it, when I was searching for like a Gabu Bond or something. And then like I had a Louis in hand with Tamer set up ready so that I could promote and gain the memory. And then like go into Gabu Bond that turn. Uh, so there was a lot of things like, I would definitely keep this at two. Um, and you don't need trainings in this deck. You just don't. <laughs> the memory gain is a lot better. Um, I know people are running like Gazimons and Chumons and stuff right now, uh, but that never really came up. Uh, I could always answer their board, just bounce it back with like Gesomon or like a Zudomon or something and then play and then use it. Um, but it was pretty good. It was all right at two. Uh, and our last options here, uh, we did play three Foxfire. This card is insane. <laughs> um, I don't know if a lot of people know what this card does. I'll go ahead and read it to you. It says, return one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon to the hand. Uh, if you have a Digimon with Gabumon or Garurumon in its name, return one of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest level to hand instead. So there was times where my opponent had level six on board and I didn't really have much. So they gave me, you know, they put me to three. Um, I would drop a Gabumon. And then I would use Foxfire to bounce their level 6 to hand. Uh, as long as it didn't have protection, which most things right now don't have protection. Um, unless you're playing like Greymon, I guess. Um, this comes in clutch a lot. A out of security as well, it did come in clutch a lot. Uh, this card is insane. I wouldn't change it for anything else, to be honest. Uh, I was thinking about running a Rattlestar. Um, but... I play tested and this card was just way too good being able to either bounce level fours against Numamon. This is really good as well. Uh, early game uh, stuff that you can do to like stall them out a little bit while you set up your tamers. Foxfire is just really good uh, and it's only for four costs. So you can essentially bounce anything with a Gabumon on board for four costs, which if they have only one Digimon on board, of course. Uh, but we can answer their other stuff with other Digimon effects and then end on a Foxfire. Uh, Foxfire also does work with Gabubon. Uh, if you have Gabubon on board and you, like they had three Digimons in like another stack, uh, which can happen in, in Numamon because they, you know, they play a lot of stuff out. Uh, if you have Gabubon on board, you can clear three things. And then if they have one more, you can Foxfire it back to hand. Uh, if it's a bigger stack, like there was uh, someone that I played against, they had a bunch of, they had three Numamons on board and then a Platinum Numamon. Uh, so I couldn't bottom deck it with uh, Bond of Friendship because he only bottom decks level five or lowers. Uh, so at the end, um, at the end of my swings, uh, I just went, okay, Foxfire, bounce Numamon back to hand or Platinum Numamon back to hand and then we were good. Uh, but that's pretty much the deck profile. Um... I had two ties. One of my ties was against a Gammon player. Um, I was kind of frustrated at that because um, the way it happened was I was swinging for game and Judge came in and said that's time in overtime. And I said, I'm swinging for game. And he said, no, that's it. And I was like, okay, I guess. So we took the, that was our first game that, um, that was our first game of the day and we got a tie. So that was kind of annoying to me, um, but you know, as I continued through the day, uh, my second tie uh, was against security control. You know, that's just, it, it happens. <laughs> uh, it was a quick uh, game one, I beat him, and then uh, game two, no, he beat me game one, and then game two, I beat him, and then we went into time uh, in round three. Um, so I mean, that, there's not much that you could do against that. This deck, I, I did play against two security controls in this um, in this tournament. Uh, the first one that I played, uh, I beat him pretty quick game one, and then game two I decked him out because I wasn't getting any tamers. So I just started like hard playing stuff, and he was like playing magnas and stuff, recovering constantly. Uh, he's the one who had like 16 security because he just kept playing the magnamon because I kept bouncing it to hand uh, with Gesomon or. Um, Zudomons or Foxfires uh, so that he couldn't keep anything on board and it wasn't going to trash either so we couldn't hell sight it back um, so I mean that was really good as well I kind of just stalled him out I guess and he was 
you know, drawing cards and recovering and playing stuff. Well, I was just playing one card at a time. I was playing pretty slow. Um, you know, I wasn't trying to promote really. I sat in the back a couple turns. I would just play a card real quick, pass my turn. I wasn't really trying to go into time against him. Um, so I, I think it, it did all right in that sense. And I did too all that one. Uh, what else did I play against? I played against, oh, I have the list here, let me see. I played against uh, Gammon, uh, Lugamon, round two, I believe it was. I think it was Lugamon round two. Uh, against Lugamon, I just bottom decked all his stuff. I was a lot faster than him. Um, game two, he couldn't find uh, a level four, I believe. So that was unfortunate for him. And uh, like I said, game one, he did go into Fenrir Luga and tried to pop um, Metal Garu and then Evade activated and, you know, I restood or whatever. So he couldn't get rid of my uh, Metal Garurumon to do the OTK. Um, and then like that that next turn, I kind of swung with uh, Guru, uh, Metal Guru and then went to bond over it. And, you know, that was pretty much it. Uh, game three, I played against All Force. I don't know if it was set Connor or Force first, but uh, round three, um, yeah, I just he couldn't do anything. <laughs> he couldn't do anything. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I, I was just bouncing all his stuff back to hand, so he couldn't really do anything. Um, I think at one point he was missing an old Force as well, so I kind of just Ukomon rushed him. I drew my Ukos and Louis and stuff, so I was just promoting and swinging. Um, the next one, like I said, I think it was Setcon, and that was the Setcon player I tied against. Uh, round five, I played against. Uh, he was playing um, a black. I think I, I think that was the guy that was playing like black heavy Leo. I'm not sure what exactly it was, but it was some kind of like um, black deck with um, Marvin and uh, heavy Leo Mon, and um, I think it's the Giga German that gives DJ Evolved one. Um, I beat him pretty quick as well as a quick 2-0. I beat a lot of my opponents 2-0 uh, pretty quickly uh, just by rushing them down. And this was one of those ones where he couldn't keep anything on board because I was just bouncing uh, his uh, higher cost Digimon back to hand. Um, after him, I think I played Numamon. I think that's when I played Numamon. Yeah. Towards the later rounds. I played Numon and it was the same thing with him. He couldn't keep a board. I was just bouncing everything and I saw everything that I needed. Um, my last game was against uh, Grace Nova because I did play a Grace Nova in the later round. In the later later rounds, I was like, "Oh man, you know, like, congrats to you for getting this far with." Sun and Moon. And he's like, no, congrats to you for getting this far with Gabubon. And I was like, yeah. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, he also couldn't establish a board. I was bouncing everything back to hand. He couldn't keep level four on board. Uh, he went in. He did get one stack with level five, um, but it was too late by that time. And I kind of just bounced it back to hand as well. Um, so that was pretty much it. Yeah, it was Gammon, Lugamon, O Force, Sekon. Uh, the black deck, Heavy Leo, I'm not sure what it was. Uh, Setcon again, Numamon, and um, Grace Nova. So that's pretty much it um, for my matchups and you know the deck profile. Uh, I do want to shout out um, my friend Marco for helping me play test all the time on um, on Project Drazel. You know, shout out to him. He plays Numamon and Setcon, so I get a lot of practice from him uh, in those matchups. So shout out to Marco, and then uh, I want to go ahead and shout out to CK as well uh, and Valley Boys TCG uh, YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. Um, this is, you know, we've done podcasts before. We need to do some more. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for having me on the channel, CK, and I'll see you guys later.